Peace and Pan-Africanism, Peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, Peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, Peace and Pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde Oguntade. I'm coming to you live and direct from Hotlanta, Georgia. I'm coming to you live and direct from Hotlanta, Georgia. First of all, shout out to my brother Drewski. Had a good episode today on Could Have Been Love. Hit me with a couple bunnies. I had a sand bunny and a rice bunny and a snow bunny. Hit me with a couple bunnies. But you did have some sisters in there. Make sure y'all look out for that Dr. Umar and Drewski episode coming soon. First of all, Toronto, Canada, God willing, I can't wait to see you all tomorrow. Toronto, Canada, God willing, I can't wait to see you all tomorrow. Toronto, Canada, can't wait to see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow night from 7 until 10 at The Real Jerk. 647 College Avenue in Toronto. Friday night's main event in Toronto, Canada. Friday night's main event in Toronto, Canada will be at The Real Jerk. 647 College Avenue from 7 p.m. until 10. All my Toronto queens better come give me a hug. I haven't seen you in 12 years. I'm going to say it again. All my Toronto queens better be at the Real Jerk tomorrow night, 7 until 10, and give Dr. Umar my 12-year hugs. All my Toronto queens. Butter almond, butter pecan, caramel, walnut, pistachio, uh, buttercream, sweet brown sugar. All my Toronto queens better give me a hug after 12 years. All of you better give me a hug. Do you know the last time I was in Toronto, we had not started collecting money for FDMG? The last time I was in Toronto, we hadn't even started the FDMG campaign. February of 2012, Black History Month 2012 is the last time I was in Toronto. My Toronto queens better show up. My Nova Scotia queens better show up. My Montreal queens better show up. And then Saturday, where's the information for Saturday? Let me tell y'all where we're going to be at Saturday. Saturday, we will be at the Lighthouse, 555 Wentworth Street East in Oshawa, Ontario. The Lighthouse, 555 Wentworth Street East in O-S-H-A-W-A, Oshawa, Ontario. And that's going to be Saturday, October the 5th from 2 until 8. Dr. Umar pulling up at four. And then Sunday is the main event at the Jamaican Canadian Association. Sunday is the main event at the Jamaican Canadian Association, 995 Arrow Road. The program is from 12 to eight. I'm pulling up at four. Tomorrow at the Real Jerk, I will be there from seven till 10. Saturday in Oshawa, at the Lighthouse, 555 Wentworth Street. I'm pulling up at four, but the program starts at two. And at the Jamaican Canadian Association, I'm pulling up at four, but the program starts at noon. If you need tickets, go to GACNTO.com. If you need tickets for the Dr. Umar Toronto Canada triple header, G-A-C-N-T-O dot com or you can call 647-919-0466. 
647-919-0466 or you can call 437-922-4831. 437-922-4831. I'm not putting no links nowhere. I'm giving you the information. Screenshot it or write it down with your lazy ass. Now, while I'm waiting for my food to come here, while I'm waiting on my ATL dinner before I go to bed tonight, shout out to all my ATL queens. I'm sleeping alone. I'm sleeping alone tonight, ladies. I'm on my spiritual journey. I'm sleeping alone tonight, ladies. I'm on my spiritual journey. I'm not going to no clubs, no bars, because there's too many five, five, thick in the thigh queens here in Atlanta. I'm not leaving because if I go out, I'm going to end up coming back with some Cinnabons. And I'm not trying to do that tonight. I'm not trying to do that tonight. I'm not trying to do that tonight. So let me get into my message. Let me get into my message. Let me get into my message. Too many black couples. Too many black couples, especially young black couples, are calling it quits on your relationship because you are bored. You want to end your relationship because you are bored. Dr. Umar is here to tell you right now. One of the worst reasons you can leave a relationship One of the worst reasons you can call it quits on your engagement. One of the worst reasons you can have for dismissing your wife, dismissing your husband, dismissing your partner, dismissing your significant other. One of the worst reasons ever to end a relationship is because of boredom. Boredom is not a good reason to end your relationship. And the reason boredom is not a good reason to end your relationship is because boredom is one of the easiest problems to fix. Let me say that again. Boredom is one of the easiest problems to fix in a relationship. It's not infidelity. It's not financial irresponsibility. It's not poor parenting. It's not domestic abuse. It's not selfishness. It's boredom. Let's talk about some of the reasons why you're bored in your relationship. And let's talk about some of the ways you can end the boredom in your relationship. Number one, one of the biggest reasons boredom creeps into the relationship is because one of you or neither one of you is prioritizing intimacy. You have to prioritize intimacy. That's right. You have to prioritize the bumping and grinding. You have to prioritize the fun times you're going to spend together. You have to prioritize your romance. There is a tendency to take the relationship for granted once you are in it. I said there is a tendency to take the relationship for granted once you are in it. You must prioritize intimacy in the relationship the same way you prioritized it when it was a situationship. You have to prioritize the intimacy in your relationship the same time, the same way it was prioritized when you were dating. When you guys were dating, you prioritize intimacy. And intimacy is not only the sex. Intimacy is quality time spent together. Sex is a part of the quality time that you spend together. But sex is not the sum total of intimacy. Let me say that again. Sex is the cherry on top of the intimacy. Sex is not the only aspect of the intimacy. Intimacy is all about 
the private quality time that you spend with your significant other. In black men, we make a big mistake when we think because we can be Shangolicious in the bedroom. Black men tend to think because we can be Shangolicious in the bedroom. Black men tend to think because we can butter those Cinnabons like no, no other man she ever dated. We think we don't have to do anything else when it comes to intimacy. Sooner or later, she will no longer be satisfied with the sex, no matter how good it is. Because a woman who's only getting sex and not getting quality intimacy, sooner or later, she's going to feel taken advantage of and ignored. I don't care how good the sex is, sooner or later, the woman will start to feel taken for granted and ignored. A relationship that only exists in the bedroom will die in the bedroom, no matter how good the sex is. Let me say that again. A relationship that only exists in the bedroom will die in the bedroom, no matter how good the sex is. You need to know this. The same thing goes for the black queen. The same thing goes for the African woman. The same thing goes for my beautiful African sisters. We have a lot of Neanderthal persuasion in my chat tonight, and I don't know why. We have a lot of Neanderthal persuasion in the chat tonight, and I don't know why. Y'all claim to not like me. Y'all claim to hate me. Y'all claim that I'm a racist. But whenever I go live, there's at least a hundred Neanderthals in my feed. I don't know what it is because I don't do ice. I don't do rice. I don't do spice. I don't do sand and I don't do salsa. I said, I don't do rice. I don't do ice, I don't do spice, I don't do sand, and I don't do salsa. But y'all always in my chat, but I digress. Let the most requested black scholar in the world digress. Black women, sometimes y'all think because you got the super bomb fellatio. Black women, sometimes y'all think because y'all got this, y'all the, Y'all the headmaster. Because you are the homegrown headmaster. Sooner or later, if all you are is a master of fellatio, he's going to get tired. He may not get tired of the fellatio, but he may get tired of the relationship. I'm telling you, if you think sex is enough, you are wrong. 75% of your relationship is lived outside of the bedroom. Let me say that again. 75% of the relationship is lived outside of the bedroom. Let me say it one time for the Negro peons in the back. 75% of your relationship is lived outside of the bedroom. You must prioritize intimacy. When is the last time y'all spent a weekend together away from the children? When is the last time y'all spent a weekend together away from the children? I tend to find that child rearing and child bearing tends to put strain on the relationship. It doesn't have to put strain on the relationship. Having children should not disturb the intimacy between a man and a woman. The reason having children begins to disturb the intimacy is y'all don't work hard enough to prioritize the intimacy. When you don't work hard enough to prioritize the intimacy, 
in your relationship, you know what happens? The father start getting jealous of the son because the mommy is showing more affection to the son than the dad. Or the mommy starts getting jealous of the daughter because the father is showing more affection to the daughter than to the mommy. I've seen this. It comes up a lot in therapy. It comes up a lot in counseling. It comes up a lot in life coaching. I've had mothers tell me he's jealous of how much attention I'm giving our son. I've had fathers tell me she's jealous of how much attention I'm giving our daughter. That's because you're pulling back on her attention. That's because you're pulling back on his attention. If you're not going to prioritize the intimacy, the relationship will fail. If you're not going to give your partner the same amount of attention they received before marriage. If you're not going to give your partner the same amount of attention they received before the children. The relationship is going to die. It's going to die because there's people outside of your home who are willing to give your wife all the attention she wants. They may only do it so they can get some coochie, but they will give your wife all the attention she wants. There's some women out there, black women, who will give your husband all the attention he wants. She may only be doing it out of jealousy and spite towards you, but, but she will give him all the attention he wants. When the relationship gets boring, the two people in it need to get more creative. Not more creative in the bedroom, more creative outside of the home. Not more creative in the bedroom, more creative outside of the home. You have to give your relationship oxygen or it will suffocate. You have to give your relationship oxygen oxygen or it will suffocate. The only way you can give your relationship oxygen is to get outside of the house. The relationship needs to breathe. Get the relationship outside of the house. Reinvent the relationship. You just can't come home with flowers anymore. You just can't come home and put on that sexy little teddy you used to put on when you was 35. When you was 35, that sexy little teddy, that sexy lingerie you put on for your husband, that used to get him crunking. That used to be a solution for his erectile dysfunction. When you was 35 and that body was banging, when you was 35 and them titties used to stare right out front like a pair of lights on a car that was enough to get his erectile dysfunction out of park but you can't get his erectile dysfunction out of park with that lingerie because them titties ain't staring out out like they used to them titties ain't looking straight like the car lights no more them titties is looking down at the carpet now them breasts are looking down at the carpet now. You got a little gut over that waistline now. Them, ad, them Cinnabons, them Cinnabons ain't as full as they used to be when you was 35, black woman. So you got to rent a hotel room and a nice Airbnb, Airbnb and cook him a nice dinner. Black man. You can't put on your favorite Speedos and some Timberlands like you used to when you used to go to the gym getting it in. When you was in college, you show up to her dorm room and some Speedos and some Timberlands. And that was enough when you was in college, Black King. That was enough when you was in college, Black King. But you 40 years old now. You ain't got that six pack no more. You 40 year old, year old now. You got man boobs now, my ninja. You got man boobs now, my ninja. You're going to have to take her to the lake, lay her down on a soft bed at the river and give her a full body massage. That's how you're going to get that yoni verse out of park now. 
that yoni verse ain't getting out of park just because you showed up with a beer gut and your favorite Spider-Man Speedos on and them fake Tims. That's not going to work no more, Ninja. You got to put more effort into the romance if you want to save the relationship. I'm going to tell you right now. A big reason our black relationships suffer from boredom. A big reason our black relationships suffer from boredom. A big reason our black relationships suffer from boredom. Is you start prioritizing your friends over your partner. Any relationship where your friends are more important than your companion. Your homies are more important than your wife. Your girlfriends and your sorors are more important than your husband. Oh, no. Your family can't be more important than your husband. Your family can't be more important than your wife. Prioritize intimacy. Prioritize time together. Prioritize Conflict resolution. That's another big one. That's another big one. You got to prioritize conflict resolution. Y'all don't want to solve problems no more. Hmm. Where my keys at? You got to prioritize conflict resolution. Y'all got to talk about your problems. Don't walk away from each other. Don't shrug it off. Don't ignore it. Y'all have to talk about your problems and work it out, fam. If there's no communication, there will be conflict. If there's no communication, there will be conflict. You got to work it out, y'all. You got to work it out. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Toronto, I can't wait. Nashville, Wednesday. Where my Nashville? Eats popped in here yet, did they? All right. Right here, beautiful. Black Queens forever, snow bunnies never. What's going on? You dropping off the Uber Eats? Yeah. That's the only bag they had? Yeah. Look a little light. Yes, sir, that's me. No, 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 no. Um, I ordered a, I'm supposed to have a whole uh, shrimp crab combo with that. That's not what that is? That, that's a different place? Yeah. All together? It's the same place, it's just, this is a different order. A different person? Yeah, so somebody else probably picked up your section. They got the bites, the shrimp. Okay, we'll work it out. Because they got it all on there. 
They got the deviled eggs. They got the salmon bites. But see what I'm thinking, the whole shebang is like crabs and shrimps and all that. You feel me? Yeah. And I'm looking at this like, but we'll see. Don't worry about that because that's not on you, young king. Y'all have a good one now. All right. Be safe. I ain't even get my crabs and my shrimps. This shit is crazy. I got ripped off of my food. Atlanta, how y'all gonna do me like that? Atlanta, where's my crabs and my shrimps at? Atlanta, this ain't cool. Where my Atlanta queens at? I need some food. Who bringing me some food tonight? Which one of my Atlanta queens? Let me see if I got all my food, family. Let me see if I got all my food. I don't think I got all my food. Look at this little bag, family. Look at this. Look at this little ass bag, right? If I ain't got my food, I'm giving somebody a bad review. I'll tell you that. I got my deviled eggs. I got my salmon bites. Okay, I guess it's okay, family. I guess it's okay, family. We, we, we might be all right. I ain't got no dipping sauce, though. They ain't give me no dipping sauce. How y'all ain't gonna give me no dipping sauce, family? Oh, my God. I ain't ate all day. Mmm. Lord have mercy. Don't marry no woman who can't cook. Let's do some tap ins. Who tapping in? Who tapping in? Who tapping in? No. On the Drewski show. On the Drewski show. The A-Rab got mad at me. 
and she called me a racist. Make sure y'all watch the Dr. Umar Andrewski episode. Make sure y'all watch the Dr. Umar Andrewski. The Arab got mad and walked out. She called me a racist because I asked her why did she want to marry a black man? And she got mad and said, I'm not doing this. He is a racist. Make sure y'all watch that Drewski episode. It was hot. That Drewski episode with Dr. Umar tonight was hot. You said, how did I get my doctorate? Who tapping in? Tap in. Cecilia going twice. Sister Cecilia, where you at, beautiful? How you doing, beautiful? I'm okay. How are you? I'm all right. Where you at in the world, Sister Cecilia? In Oakland, California. Oakland. I love Oakland. That's right. Uh -huh. What was the biggest challenge in Oakland for a black woman? What are the sisters going through in Oakland? Uh, the men, I think, that's gay. Uh, Not a committing, that's well, committing crime. Stuff. Say rainbow. Say rainbow, because you know those. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Too many Rainbows? Yeah. And a what lot else? of What else after that? Uh that's the only thing I can think of right now. Okay, now is Oakland being flooded with the immigration, the migrants? who's out there? How's the non blacks? What's the situation out there? Uh it's a lot, a lot of Hispanics right now. Okay. Have y'all gotten more since the migrant crisis? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you a married sister? No, I'm in a relationship. But you are in a relationship? Yeah. Okay. What is the biggest obstacle to black women other than the rainbow? What is the biggest, biggest obstacle to our sisters finding a good man out in Oakland? Money. What you mean by that? You got to have money. A lot of the, of the men out here, they don't want to take care of their women. And if they do, you got to either be doing hair, boosting, doing something. Like, a lot of them don't want to take care of the women. They looking for a lot of the women to take care of them. What is your opinion, Sister Cecilia, on the 50-50 agenda? There's a lot of brothers who say women are doing better than us financially. They should be able would have meet us 50 50 in the relationship and you have women who say if you're the man of the house and if, if you want control of the house and if you want the final decision in the house you need to be paying more than me if i'm putting as much into this relationship as you are then i will have as much say as you do where do you stand on that whole 50 50 power sharing money spending situation wow um wow i don't want to speak for everybody but for my situation uh my spouse take care of me so you um, you, you good you don't even have to work yeah i don't unless i want to okay and, um the 50 50 thing i i don't really believe in that i think 
is just you know if you're in a relationship just pay what you can help each other out like it ain't got to be no number on it or nothing like okay if he the breadwinner or she the breadwinner you know if y'all want a certain lifestyle just make it happen like why it got to be all that because marriage is a business contract so marriage is not a business thing it's not about contract. because when marriage is in and we go to divorce court are we trying to get the thongs back we wore on the honeymoon? <laughs> are we trying to get the sex back? Are we trying to take our orgasms back? Are we trying to take the back shots back, the head back? No, we want money, assets, funds, retirement, insurance, <laughs> car. So we got to be honest now. When the marriage ends, nobody cares about how much emotion they put in, how much sex they put in. They want to know what they're getting out of it financially you feel me yeah yeah, yeah. so thanks for tapping in sister cecilia i appreciate you you're welcome all you're right, welcome have a, good have a good okay. evening all right where my brothers at i want to hear from the brothers y'all good with the 50 50 or you going to do the conan thing and pay the whole bill Let me go to Black Barbie real quick. Black Barbie, where you at? Black Barbie going once. Black Barbie going twice. Black Barbie didn't pop on. Cancel her. Where my unapologetically anti-Snow Bunny alpha males? Tap in, tap in. Where y'all at? Tap in. Brother Yaz chosen going once. Brother Yaz chosen going twice. What's going on, Brother Yaz? What's going on, Doc? How you doing? You at, How you living? Where you at in the world? I'm over here in North New Jersey. Shout out to Brick City. Yes, sir. Brick One of my City. favorite yeah. places. Let me ask you, brother, yeah, where do you stand on this 50-50 thing? You know, a lot of brothers saying it's hard out here for a brother. A lot of sisters is doing okay for themselves. They should be able to meet us 50-50 in a relationship with the financial obligations. Are you cool with that 50-50? And, and, and are you also cool with some women say, I'll do 50? Some sisters say, I ain't got no problem with 50, but you are not going to be the head of this family financially, we're going to have to carry this thing together when it comes to making the financial decisions. You will not be the final say over the finances in this family if I got to put in 50%. So what's your take on 50-50? And what do you feel about sisters who say, if I do 50, you are no longer in charge of the final decisions? Where you at on that? Well, as far as I feel like if you have the position where you can take care of your woman, then absolutely, I feel that you know the man should be responsible for doing so. Uh, but unfortunately, in today's economy, you know it doesn't allow the man to participate, uh, particularly to do that, depending on the job that they that they have. Um, if a woman can't contribute, that would be. I think that's great. I think that would only help the relationship uh, grow even even greater, or if it allow them to do even different different things are better things but i feel like it's unfair to say you know based on the past that a man should automatically have to pay for the woman's for survival you know what i'm saying i think it's i think that's unfair but I, I i do support men having to be the right to be the provider i feel like that's what was set for us men to do and i feel like we have to continue to do that you know to be the provider protector of a relationship and for the children as well and how do you feel about the other part where women say, okay, I'll do the 50, but you are not the, the primary decision maker in this home. I need to agree with whatever decisions you make. Like she's saying that you're not leading. She's not leading you, but you're not leading her. She's saying, I'm going to have to sign off on any decisions you make if I have to meet you 50-50. How do you feel about that part? 
you know, a lot of people may disagree with me on this, but I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to agree with it because, you know, at the end of the day, you gotta, pay, you gotta pay, you gotta be the ball, you gotta pay the balls to be the, you gotta pay the cost to be the mm -hmm. boss. I'm sorry, you gotta pay the cost mm -hmm. to be the boss. Wow, so that's, it's true. Like, that's true. So if you don't, if you don't have the, you know, the the cachet to do so, then how how could you say, you know, you dominate a certain part of the relationship when you are requiring uh, somebody else to to put in and not much. The same amount, or if not more. So yeah, I I, I do agree. You know, what I'm saying? Wild. I feel like you. Yeah, Thanks I do that. agree. Yeah, that that was pretty strong, bro. Pretty appreciate strong. You. Yeah, appreciate you. Out. Yes, sir. Always. So, brother, y'all yeah, said, brothers, did y'all hear that? Alpha males, did y'all hear what my brother y'all yeah, just said? Representing Newark, New Jersey. He said, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. He said, you got to pay the cost. To be the boss, if you can't handle all them bills, she does not have to give you authority over the family. Lord have mercy. You got to pay the cost to be the boss. Let me go to Sister Crazy Sexy Cool. Crazy Sexy Cool going once. Crazy Sexy Cool going twice. Crazy sexy cool. You too scared to pop up. Let me see. He was going there with your child. Y'all got some weird names. Your child going once. Sister Your Child going twice. How you doing? How you, How are you doing? Beautiful. Where, where you at in the world? Austin, what city? Austin, Austin Texas. After Austin, Texas, all 25 blacks in Austin, Texas. How are you doing? I'm, oh my God. Well, queen, I'm well. What is your opinion on 50 50? And do you, you believe it's okay for the man to expect you to come up with 50% if you're doing okay, obviously? Yeah. And if you are okay with 50 50, do you feel that you also? have a right to basically override or co-sign any decisions he make financially since you're given half of the money or does he still remain the head of your household financially okay i i agree with 50 50. um i couldn't do 50 50 right now but like in the future yeah i would i would agree with 50 50. um I would like to co-sign on all the financial decisions because I'm paying for half the bills. So it only makes sense because I think 50-50 is a partnership. Okay. What do you say to black women who feel that if a man can do at least 80%, he ain't got no business getting married in the first place? How do you feel about that? Uh, I feel like that's kind of like entitlement. Like they... They feel entitled to that. You, like maybe they were spoiled when they were younger, or they just don't want to spend their own money on bills. So I feel like they shouldn't feel like that. When you date in your age bracket, when you date, or just people in your age bracket, period, I hear that the brothers in their thirties and twenties, they are more unapologetic about asking the women to split the bill. Um, have you found that to be the case? Me personally, no. I actually, I always bring money when I go out, but I've never had to pay for the bill. I wouldn't mind going 50-50. Um, like, I feel like it's not it's not an issue. Okay, so you're good with it. Yeah. All right, all right. All right. You know, I've only been to Austin. I've been to Austin two or three times. I got to get back there. I'll be in Dallas on Saturday, oh. October the 10th. Oh, no, come to Austin. We got we got an HBCU here. Come to Austin. Till Tilliston. What's the mm -hmm. name of that? Yep, yep. Yeah, the Till Hudson Tilliston. So yeah. I, I, come. I come, come visit. We go. They would love to see you, Princess. Thanks for tapping in, sweetheart. No problem. Bye. Right. Have a great night. You too, sweetie. God bless. Bye. You. All right. So the young queen says she good but she need to have 50% power in the decisions. Okay, she said she good with the 50-50, but she wants some of that power. Okay. 
Let me go to Ayo Drika real quick, then I'm going to pull up another king. Oh Ayo Drika, I need to see your face, baby. We can't talk if I can't. She hung up. Lights went out. I don't know if she didn't pay the light bill. Let me get Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel, pull up. Brother Daniel, pull up. Hello, hello. What up, Brother Daniel? Where you at in the world, brother? I'm in Atlanta. Oh, you in Atlanta with me right now? Yeah, I look, that corn looking good. Where it come from? Oh, man, I don't know where I got this food from, my brother, but I was hungry. I just got finished taping with my brother Drewski, helping him find a mate. He hit me with a couple bunnies. He hit me with a rice bunny. He hit me with a sand bunny. He hit me with a snow bunny. What uh, is a sand bunny? <laughs> he had, had some sisters in there. You know I chose a sister for him. I told him you got to have a sister. Mm -hmm. What is your take on this 50-50 situation, my brother? Do you think it's okay for us to be asking women to go half with us? And if she does want to go half, is it okay for her to tell us you can't make no final decisions without my approval since I'm putting in 50% of the money in this family? Where you stand on this, King? Personally, I am not a 50-50 kind of dude. Uh, I'm a software engineer. I don't plan, you know, when I when I eventually get married to, to be 50-50, I plan to take care of the bills for show. So that's just not the way that I live life. But, like, my take on 50-50, I feel like it's kind of like, I feel like with men, and you can't have your cake and eat it too. Like, I think the whole idea of being the head of the home comes with the association of providing. And I think also for women, like if you want to get taken care of in that same kind of patriarchal way, you should also align with the other patriarchal beliefs. I feel like it can't just be like a, I want you to buy me things, but I can't understand where that, where that is rooted in. You know what I'm saying? I feel like just for both sides, I feel like you can't just have your cake and be like, listen, man, I'm broke, but I want you to just listen to me and follow my directions as a man. It don't really make much sense. You know what I'm saying? So then let me ask you this. Given the economic castration of black men in this country, that we have a lot of brothers who do good. We know that. But when you look at the mass incarceration and, and overwhelmingly black men have an economic struggle, that's going to get worse with the influx of the migrants now because they're taking all the jobs. Is it still fair to tell a man you cannot be the authority in your home if you can't provide, if you cannot be the primary provider in that home? Hmm. I feel like fair is like wouldn't what I wouldn't the word that I would want to use in this analysis. Because to be honest with you, like if I wasn't financially equipped, I wouldn't want to get married. I think marriage as a man is a responsibility, not just for the wife, but for the future kids. Me personally, I just wouldn't be like, OK, I'm going to someone say he has to be African. I am. I'm Nigerian. But <laughs> uh, I just I wouldn't go into marriage thinking to myself, oh, I don't have I don't have the, the finances to take care of this woman. I just wouldn't do it. Like, it's just not something I would feel comfortable doing. No, see, having the envision, like envisioning the marriage I want. So like I recognize and understand that some people don't live that way. Like if you don't have the mindset of thinking like that or wanting to take care of, of your wife, then yeah, for sure. Like go and find somebody that has a similar mindset because there are also women like, you know, like the uh, like the young lady before that's OK with 50 50. But you have to take it. You have to accept what that comes with. Like if you want to be with someone that also is OK with 50 50, then you can't be thinking like a man that isn't 50 50. I feel like that's really what it is. Makes sense. Let me throw one more question at you. And I follow what you're saying. I'm just looking at it politically and structurally. And I don't necessarily disagree either. But here's my concern. If you can't afford it, why are you marrying yourself to it? I get it. But that's not going to stop men from dating. That's not going to stop women from getting pregnant. That's not going to stop. In other words, when you say, if you can't afford that family, don't make it. Did we just give brothers an excuse not to get married? No, we have to, we have to give brothers an excuse, uh, an opportunity to choose correctly. 
In other words, y'all brothers just said, if I can't afford to take care of the family, it ain't no need to get married. So that's why I'm going to keep her as a girlfriend or a baby mom forever. Because y'all just told me, since I'm not making enough to handle this on my own, I'm just going to keep her in baby mom status. In other words, can that be flipped back on the community? Because we're putting a requirement there for marriage that a lot of brothers won't be able to meet financially. See, I understand your point. I agree. But I would say it's more so finding a woman that aligns with where you want to be mentally. Like, I'm not saying don't don't get married. I'm just saying don't try to force and put a uh, frame a woman into some uh, like a fit that she doesn't fit in. Like if that woman wants to be taken care of, go and find a woman that aligns with where you are right now that you can build with. But it's like I feel like a lot of times men will see a woman because she looks good physically mm -hmm. and then it's trying to mold her into that image of, oh, OK, like you're not that you're the girl that I want to be 50 50. Or I want to have this 50 50 mindset, but she doesn't want to be there. I'm saying you have to be equally yoked. You have to have that same mindset. I'm not saying not don't have any commitment. I'm just saying if you choose to commit, you have to choose wisely. I'm with you. Well said, my brother. Thanks for tapping in. Okay, well, one second, real quick. Go ahead. I'm trying to get an interview with you, Dr. Umar. I've been uh, emailing you. Take my number. You Text me. You got my number? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. You got the 215 Yeah, I've been texting. You don't be texting back. Hey, I'm the Nigerian brother who was on the live tonight. So I, I got you. We'll set it up. All right. All right. Appreciate you, King. See ya. All right. All right. We got to go back to the Queens. Who's going to represent for the Queens now? Who's going to represent for the Queens now? Somebody tap in. I need a queen. I need a strong sister. I hope she got her own hair, but I'll take a weave, queen, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Somebody tap in. I'm waiting for a tap in. I'm waiting for a tap in. I don't see no tap ins. Where the tap ins at? Where the tap ins at? I don't see no tap ins. Where the tap ins at? Where I don't see no tap, man. I think they hating. They, there we go. There we go. They go tapping. There we go. I need a sister. Miss Molasses going once. Miss Molasses going twice. Where you hey. at, Miss Lad? Hey, beautiful. Where you at in the world? Where are you in the world, Miss Molasses? I'm in. Say that, that again. You broke up, Miss Molasses. Why you give up, Miss Molasses? Ann Tweezy. Is this a sister? Ann Tweezy. Where you at, Ann Tweezy? I need to see you. I need to see your face. Okay, here I am. <laughs> Where you at in the world, Ann Tweezy? Where you at? San Antonio. Oh, my goodness. I know exactly who I'm talking to. How you doing? <laughs> I ain't recognize you with the hair all rolled up. All right. Yeah, I just hit a six-mile run. Can you believe that? Understood. Understood. <laughs> Take on the 50 50. Are you okay meeting a man 50 50? And if you are okay meeting a man 50 50, does that require him to relinquish some of the decision making power in the home? And he now has to share it with you because you are meeting him 50 50. Where you stand? So, my mom and my dad both worked two jobs at a point in my life. Like my sisters growing up, they raised us, and my mom worked, my dad worked, and they both ruled the household but my dad always had the final say so we really honored and respect him my mom she's getting her doctorate degree my dad served as a marine he has his high school education but we always honored my dad and honored his role for me i've been working since i was 16 years old um i'm in my 30s now i'm single whatever um if i meet a man and he's like yeah let's build together let's work together then okay but if i meet a man and he's like yeah like i can take care of everything I would love that so I can rest in my femininity, 
I can say, okay, let me cook, let me take care of you, let me take care of this house. And I think I can really enjoy that role. So, but um, I think that if I had to do 50-50 with the man, I'm still going to honor him as the man and, and the leader of the household. So, so for you, that doesn't change anything. It doesn't still, change anything for even me. Even if you meet them 50-50. And what, what I... Oh. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. What, what do you say about sisters? There's some sisters who say, if you can't handle at least 80% of mm -hmm. the financial load of this family, you shouldn't be looking to get married. How do you feel about that 80% rule? Um, I don't think that's appropriate, especially for our population and what we've been through, you know, in this world. I just, I don't think that's appropriate, but I think if that woman has that standard, then that's on her. I hope she finds what she's looking for. Um, but for me, I'm like, you know, as long as you're able to be a, a healthy partner in your mental health, spiritual health, physical, all that, and we're working together and building, then I'm, I'm good with that. There's a lot more in life than money, you know. Last question for you. Great, great, very great commentary. As a single, beautiful black woman, why are you still single? Um, I do have standards and all that. I think a lot of situations I've met are very sexually motivated right away. I don't like moving that fast. I like to really get to know somebody. Um, there are men that are interested, but, you know, we promote kind of what we're talking about as far as staying within the, the family. Right. I'm in San Antonio, so, you, got, you know. <laughs> no puppy sniffing around. <laughs> but I mean, I, I love everybody, but I, I date black men. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm just staying focused. I hope I find a, a, a partner for myself or meet a partner, but. Give me two things before I let you go. Give me two things that black women are tired of seeing or dealing with when it comes to black men. What are two things y'all just ain't got no patience for anymore? So last night, actually I was at karaoke and I was hanging with this Puerto Rican dude, me and him are friends or whatever. And this black dude comes to the table and say, oh, you're with a black woman. Oh, I give you props for that. Black women are this and black women are that. And there was a lot of, and then he was like, oh, I couldn't date a, a black woman that's darker than me. He was a light skinned guy. Wait, yes. the black guy said that to the white guy that he couldn't date a dark to the Puerto Rican dude. What? He was like, he's like, oh, you know, um, colorist uh, comments and really grouping all black women as being one thing and saying really negative comments to, uh, to me. So I think with black men, not all, because I I meet a lot of black men who do love us, but all this like, if you're gonna date non-black women, then just do it, don't, but leave us out of it, excuses. right? And don't, right, don't make excuses why you're not with a black woman. Right. Or, or put us down and all that. So or is I got to shame black women to justify why I'm not with them. Right. Right. Wow. I think wow. it's really, um, it's really low and really irresponsible because I don't hear, and I'm in a town where I don't hear Latino men say that about their women. I don't hear Asian men say that about their women or Arab men. They respect their community. You know, Everybody and they have their problems. Oh, <laughs> women, that is very true. Um, Give me something, so, something else you're tired of. Uh huh. Hmm. Now you talked about that sex thing. Let's go there for a minute. Okay, that part. Because <laughs> you know, brothers love cookies. We love cinnamon. Right. But mm -hmm. tell me, tell me how y'all would prefer men to approach the cookie baking. Mm -hmm. I'll speak for myself that for me, I'm a whole person, mind, body, spirit. I'm not a sexual object. And I think a lot of men or black men shame black women for being whatever, promiscuous or whatever, but then they're quick to say, well, I'll just run through them. I'll run through somebody else's daughter, but then I'll have a wife over here. And I just think like that's really hypocritical. You know, and I think a lot of our music and culture throughout time has been really traumatic, at least for me as a little girl, being like, okay, is that how they see us? And then I went to an HBCU, which I'm really happy, proud of my HBCU. I went to, had a beautiful time, but there was like a section of men, I remember in a courtyard, calling out women being, hey, B, hey, ho, hey, what? this, hey, that, and just talking this any kind of way. And I just think and like, we really need to, also. there is students there you I mean, know the and they, men, of course the, the men who were using the vogue the, the the vulgar titles they mm -hmm. were also 